So Pluto, all right. It's, it's there, relatively bright, but it's kind of the question and controversy that is always brought up when we talk about anything astronomy related. I could be talking about galaxies. What do you think about Pluto? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this drives most of us to do public communication crazy because um, Pluto was famously demoted from being a planet. That's right. And if I was demoted from being a professor at the university, I would be pissed off. That's right. However, Pluto probably doesn't even know or care what's going on. In fact, yeah. lots, lots of humans do. Yes, and especially Americans. There's this emotional attachment because Clyde Trombaugh discovered. I mean, so in fact, I remember after the IAU uh, demoted Pluto, uh, a week and a half later, the New Mexico state legislature passed a law saying, nope, in New Mexico, where the Lowe Observatory is, it will still be a planet. Well, the level of observatory I have to contradict to is in, in Arizona, Arizona, but, but nearby. Clyde was, but Clyde lived in New Mexico for the rest of his life. Yeah. yeah. So this has nothing to do with astronomy. It's to do That's with right. how humans name yeah. things. But we've got to spend at least one video talking about this because it raises so many passions. Now, and because all the other planets, they, they've been visible. So they've always had names for forever, right? I mean, and yeah. in different cultures and different languages. They well, everything names. after Saturn yeah. had names since historic times. I mean. But then how do you name something new that you've discovered? Yeah. Now, people ask, for example, I'd be honest with you, is Australia a continent? Yeah. I mean, the question is, look up continent, come up with a definition, then we'll tell you the answer. But the, the English language, unlike some other languages, there is no governing body that decides what words mean. Yeah. I mean, you've got the Académie Française and in French and other languages which can kind of def give you an official meaning. But you know, kids at school always ask, oh, What's the definition of a continent? They can look up a dictionary, but different dictionaries will have different ones. That's right. And also the meaning of words change with time. That's, it. That's right. Like the word silly, mm -hmm. originally meant holy and pious. Uh, a bit, monk different, would... bit different than nowadays. <laughs> and it's changed its meaning several times. And there are numerous other words that have completely changed their meaning That's and now right. mean the reverse or something unrelated to what they originally meant. Exactly. So in English, unlike some other languages, a word just means what people use it to mean. And if people start using it to mean something else, then tough luck, the definition changes. So when you discover a new object, this is what originally happened. People started using different names for it. That's right. And eventually some name sticks and everyone starts using it. So, for example, Uranus is originally going to be called George's star. That's right. And because was... Herschel named after King George. And that because he was the patron of the observatory that he worked at, right? Yeah. He was a government employee, essentially. And what better way to honor your king than to name the new planet that... Again, Uranus, that was the first planet ever discovered, technically, right? Because yes. all the other planets have been visible, so that's quite a great honor. Yeah, and eventually people thought they might call it Herschel. That's right. Um, and eventually they decided, let's go with a mythological theme. The other planets have got mythological themes, and so I forget who it was now suggested that Uranus for various mythological reasons. I think Saturn was the father of Jupiter and Uranus is the father of Saturn or something yeah, yeah, like that. That's this. right. It's a father and grandfather line relative to Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. And so that's, and, the, and a similar thing happened when Neptune was discovered. Again, people were originally going to call it Le Verrier after the discoverer, but eventually... Which decided, would have been nice for the mathematician, <laughs> but yes. And they were running out of fathers for <laughs> Uranus, but uh, in the mythology, but they came up with a mythological name for it. Um, and so it was kind of accident. It could easily have had a different name. Yep. Um, and it's just whatever stuck. Now, that's how things worked through to the late middle of the 20th century. The trouble was then as the new objects were coming in at such regularity, in particular right. craters on the moon, with yeah. the first rockets going around the far side of the moon, which are Russian, Soviet, and everyone was worried that absolutely everything in the solar system would end up with a Russian name, uh, probably unpronounceable. That's right. And, you know, they were also the first ones to explore Venus, so Venus would have started having had Russian or Cradlic names. And so... The decision was made that we needed to have a... Uh, the trouble was you might end up with multiple names. It might have been an American name and a Russian name. You have to translate them. Everything will be different in different languages. Yep. And so the decision was made that we're going to have a, a common set of names. We want an, a neutral body to give these things names. And they decided to do the International Astronomical Union, of which I'm certainly a member. I assume you are yeah. as well. And uh, which is basically the body professional astronomers. Yeah. And so people who've done research and published papers and so on are nominated by their national body and become members of the International Astronomical Union. And a committee of this was set up to name things in space. And it was given a whole bunch of rules, basically, don't use political names, don't use nationalist names. Actually make the name an actual language. You can't just make up a language and then say it's in that name. Try and avoid offensive names. Yeah, and the basic idea is you just have one name for each object and everyone could agree on it. And so therefore, if someone was talking about 
Eris, that would be great. We knew what it was, that's right. Yes. And um, you know, there are different categories for different objects, so uh, craters and moons are normally given mythological names. That's right. I think they've run out of the Greek and Roman mythology and they're working their way through some of the other mythologies from the world at the moment. If you discover a new asteroid, um, it's, you get to name it, but not after yourself. And it can't be named after someone else already, right? So you can't name, you can't have 10 Paul Francis out there, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Yes, so, um, and they have to make sure it's not been duplicated and it's pronounced when it isn't a swear word in some language and so on. Um, so this was the, the convention. And the question that was, whereas uh, comets, as we'll talk about later, are, are named after whoever discovers them. So they tend to have the name of the discoverer. So they have to be named after. So asteroids, you can't name it after yourself. Comets have to be named after yourself. And there are so many things. They have to come up with some rule, and yeah. this is what they came so, up with. So if you discover a planet, how does that decide it? Well, this is a question. I mean, if it's an asteroid, you get to pick a name, and the IU will approve as long as it's nothing too it's obnoxious. Pretty, it's pretty straightforward. They, they then have to come up with the definition of What's, if it's, is it a planet, in which case the IAU will probably pick a name, but it has never occurred since the International Astronomical Union was That's given right. this power. Um, or, or if it's an asteroid, they don't. So they had to decide where do you draw the line between things that are considered planets and therefore the IAU will name these things or things that asteroids whereby the discoverer names them. And this kind of goes part of, back to the promise. We actually, before this, didn't really have a straightforward definition of a planet, right? Yeah. And as I said earlier in the course, I don't like the definitions of planets anyway. I mean, yeah. there are different things that go around the sun, and we call some of them gas giants, some of them ice worlds, and That's so right. on. Um, but so this is what this came up with. Basically, how do they decide how to name it? Um, now, if that's their definition of a planet. There's no reason for anyone else to use it. You can pick your own definition of a planet. That's right. But for Pluto, it was very clear that it was one of many similar things yes. in similar orbits. You see them all out here of similar sizes. And yeah, not even the biggest, not even the one with moons, and as you said, and, and likely to be even more than it's already discovered out here. So whatever definition you pick for this one, whatever it applies, that's also going to apply to a whole bunch of the other things. That's right. So you're either going to end up... and So you're going to have to draw a line somewhere. At some point, you're going to have to say... We don't want to give them all planets, all, you know, because there are probably millions of right. quick bird objects out there. Are they all going to be planets? In which case, the wall chart in your primary school room is going to be unfeasibly <laughs> That's large. I always tell school students, I said, look, you can remember eight or you can remember a thousand. It's your call. <laughs> yes. And so they had to pick a boundary, and there was a big bun fight about it. And in the end, they basically said, so to be a planet, something has to be big enough that it's got its own, it's cleared other comparable things out of its space. So basically, its bit of space is clear of anything else. And that rules out the asteroids and it rules out the Kuiper Belt. That's right. Because there are lots of similar things out there. And it's not to do with what people think of its size. That's nothing to do with its size. That's the common misconception I think people have. Not directly. Not I mean, directly. Indirectly. Exactly. Of course, if Pluto was the size of Jupiter, it would have cleared out everything That's else right. in its path. Yes. Um, so the mere fact that it's so small meant that it didn't clear everything out. There's a whole bunch of other things. So it indirectly means size. Yeah. They were thinking about maybe it was a size category, something over, big enough to be spherical, for example, That's might right. be the, the definition. But in the end, they went with a... Is it all alone in its orbit? Of course, nothing's all alone. The Earth's not alone in its orbit. There are asteroids around, but yeah. Earth is way, 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 way bigger than the asteroids. It's having other similar things, similar sized things in similar sorts of orbits. So where did Pluto's name actually come from, though? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it's a mythological name, so I don't know whether Tombaugh came up with it or... So, so from what I've heard, I think it was a suggestion that was made to them, and... Because the initials were PL, again, this is what some of the rumors are, uh, the founder of the observatory was Percival, Percival Lowell, Lowell, who hence liked the PL naming, and I guess since... I think he was actually dead by the time this was discovered. This was so. uh, this what he was discovered, but, but it also just defaulted at that time to Clyde because it was very clear he was the discoverer. There wasn't yeah. much debate about that. And there was no official procedure, so if exactly. someone starts calling it something and Could then the stuck. person talking about it, most of the name probably stuck. So that's why Pluto got demoted, but if you want to call Pluto a planet, you can pick your own definition and call it anything you like. But if you do, Eris really needs to be one as well. <laughs> and Hame and Maki Maki. They're going to be others. knocking on your door for that category soon. And the ones potentially that haven't even been discovered.